In this video, we're going to put together a cash budget, but the first thing that we need to do is put together a cash receipts budget and then have that roll into our cash budget. So we're just doing this in two separate steps. Let's read through the question together. Prince Charles Island Company has expected sales of 6,000 in September, 10,000 in October, 16,000 in November, and 12,000 in December. So before I move on, what I'm just going to do is put the actual sales numbers into my cash receipt schedule. So you'll see the first part of the schedule is sales by month. So that was the 6,000, 10,000, 16,000, and 12,000. Now we can keep reading. Cash sales are 20% and credit sales are 80% of total, and this should say sales here, so I'll just change that, of total sales. So essentially what they're telling us is of this 6,000 from September, I have 20% of that I sell for cash in that month, and then 80% of that sale I do on credit. So I sell something to my customer and I let them pay me later. So since we're doing the cash budget, it's really important for us to find out what the cash is that we receive in that month instead of what the sales is for that month because the sale isn't the cash. So now I can break that up. So all you need to do is take the 6,000 times 80% to give you 4,800. And 6,000 times 20% to give you 1,200. And I'll do the same thing with October. 10,000 times 80%. So I'm just breaking my sales up between what I sold on for cash and then what I sold on credit. So my cash sales, I'm going to put onto my cash budget, so that's not the problem. The next problem I have is trying to determine now of all of these credit sales for each month. So again, I highlighted my boxes just to remind you that this 48 is related to this sale in September and this 8,000 is related to this sale in October and so on. So the problem is, say for a September, I don't know when I'm going to receive the cash for that 4,800. So the question will have to tell us. In real life, I could rely on historical data or I could speak to somebody in the company that's more knowledgeable about the timing of sales, so they would tell me as well. But in our case, they're going to tell us. So if we just keep reading, it says, historically, 40% of receivables are collected in the month after the sale. So I have a line here for collections in the month after for credit sales, so that's 40%. And then I have the remaining 6% collected two months after the sale. So then I have that split between 40 and 60. So another question could have one being the, pre the next month and then the next next month and even the next 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 month. I've also seen questions where they'd say a percentage is never collectible, so you would never see the cash for that. But this one is fairly straightforward. It's just saying, listen, of this 4,800 credit sale, we're actually going to collect 40% of that in October. So let's do that. So 4,800 times 40%. And then we're going to collect 60% in November. So now I'm done with this credit sale. I have the cash from the current month and then of this credit sale, I have the cash for the next month and the next next month. Now let's do the same thing with October. So I have my credit sale in October of 8,000, and we're said that in the following month, so in November, I'm going to collect 40% of that. 
And then two months later, so in December, I'm going to collect 60% of that. And then we'll keep going. So now in November, my credit sale was 12,800 and I'm going to collect 40% of that of the next month. And then if I was wanting to look into January, then you can say the remainder um, in January at 60%. But right now we're just doing the cash budget for November and December. So since I don't have the data from the previous uh, months, I can't really do September or October and they don't want me to do the cash budget for those months anyways. So I'll go ahead and add up the cash sales for November and December. And remember, those are our cash sales from the current month plus your collections on your credit sales. So that one is 92.80 and then this one, I'll take my cash sales plus my credit sales. And if you compare, like November is a really good one to compare it to. So if you look at your cash receipts, in November, I'm only anticipating having $92.80 come into my bank account, whereas my sales were $16,000. But when I'm doing my cash budget, I'm just looking at the cash that's coming in, not necessarily the sales. Now that I did the cash receipts schedule, I can now move these two numbers into my cash budget. So I'm looking at November and December and this cash receipts column here is the numbers I just calculated. So that's money coming in to my bank account, which is good. Now the next step is I have to figure out what my cash payments are. So this question keeps it very basic and it tells me that Assume that the company's cash payments for November are 13,000 and December 6,000. So I'll put those in. But you could have actually, if this was a bigger question, they could have gone through the same process that I just did with my sales and made us do that with all of our cash purchases. So now that I have my cash coming in, and I have my cash coming out, I can calculate my net cash flow. So this is just these two added together. Okay, so let's try and add these together. So 92.80 minus 13,000 is minus 37.20. And then I have 12,320 minus 6,000 is 6,320. So in November, I'm actually short by 3720. Whereas in December, I have money coming in of 6320. So what we're going to do is add that change to our opening bank balance. So this beginning cash balance would have been my October 31st balance. And the question will tell us what that balance is. So it told me the beginning cash balance in November is 5,000, which is the desired minimum, minimum balance. So I'll put that 5,000 in. And now what I can do is add the 5,000 and the 3720 together. So I only have 12,080 in my bank account. And this question said, we always wanna make sure we have 5,000 in our bank account, just as a buffer. So if we're imagining what this would look like uh, from a bank standpoint, let's just pretend that we have a bank account with uh, let's just say the Royal Bank. And so then right now, my bank account has 1280 in it. And I also have a line of credit, which is a separate account that I can draw from. So whenever my bank account goes lower than $5,000, I can transfer money from the line of credit into the bank account when I need it. So that's what we're going to do. So when I say monthly loan or repayment, I need to figure out how much I need to transfer into my bank account to bring it back up to 5,000 because it's only sitting at 1280 right now. So if you just do 5,000, which is our minimum balance that we want, 
minus the 1280, that gives me 3720. So then my ending cash balance is going to be the 5,000. So 1280 plus 3720. Now I'm just gonna not do the cumulative loan balance yet. I just wanna keep our eye on the bank account. So now this ending cash balance now becomes my beginning cash balance for December. So November 30 stops, I go to bed, I wake up, it's December 1st, my balance still is the same, assuming that no transaction happened while I was sleeping, okay? So now let's do this again. So now I have cash inflows from December of 6320, I have 5,000 in my bank account. So if I add those two together, then I have 11,320 in my bank account. So remember, I always wanna have 5,000, but what I should do is pay off as much of this line of credit as I can, because remember, you're being charged interest on it. So in this case, I can actually pay off the entire amount, which is 3720, because when I now see how much I have left in my bank account, I still have 7,600. So I have 2,600 more than my minimum balance. So whenever there's a minimum balance that I wanna keep in my bank account, I'll always try and repay as much of my loan as possible up to that minimum balance. So in this case, we were able to pay off the entire loan. Now there's just two more cells that I need to look at, and this is just looking at my cumulative loan balance. So now if we're just pretending we're looking at our online banking, I'm now not looking at my bank account, I'm looking at my line of credit account. So in November, since I only started my line of credit, I borrowed 3720 to bring my bank up to 5000. So my line of credit balance is 3720. And then when I move to December, you can take your 3720 and you paid off 3720. So then my loan balance is zero. So just to recap, in November, my bank account should be 3720, or my loan balance should be 3720, and my bank account should be five. And then in December, my loan balance is going to be zero because I was able to pay it off. And then my bank account's going to have 7,600. And that's it.